In this video, I'm gonna take you on a follow along workout that's gonna help you stretch out your inner thigh muscles. So especially if you are a dude who has hip pain and you feel like, oh, it's so tight and stiff in here, this is gonna help you out a lot. If you're a lady and you feel the same way and it's all stiff and tight, then this is gonna help you. If you're somebody who's really super duper flexible already, this is not gonna help you and I don't recommend this. But for everybody else who is stiff and inflexible and has some hip pain, this can be a really good start for you. Just make sure to take it slow. Remember that slow is safe and fast is foolish. And if it feels like you're going too far too fast, you are. So take your time, go easy on this. And we'll talk about how often to do this after we're done with the workout. For this inner thigh stretch, you're gonna be down on the floor with your knee on some cushions and your leg out to the side with the knee straight or as straight as you can without feeling like anything's gonna get hurt. If you feel like you're really, really tight in here and you can't even get into this position, feel free to add yoga blocks or extra stacks of cushioning to bring this leg up higher so it's not so much stretch demand on this side. If you can't do it kneeling, you can also do this stretch using some support and just having this knee bent while you follow the rest of the instructions. So you're gonna get into position and you're going to be folding from the hips. So the idea here is that the hip joint is the axis of rotation. So you're coming down and then keeping this lower back in neutral, you're gonna be pushing your hips back towards your heels. So your butt's going back to your, towards your heels, but you're not letting this happen. If you find that you can't get your hands down to the ground, you can just use a chair or some cushions or a couch next to you and just support yourself like so. You should feel a bunch of stretch happening in the inner thigh muscles of that outstretched leg. Now, you can breathe and relax once you're in position. You can also use contractions. So there are two contraction directions you can use. So you can think about digging the foot down into the floor as if you're trying to pull the foot down and towards the midline. So that would create tension here as that foot is trying to be pulled down this way. The other direction you can contract is to go back that way. So it's like you're trying to pull your foot that direction. You're gonna feel kind of hamstrings and inner thigh muscles firing to do that. And when you relax that, you try to go deeper into the stretch. So you can use either contraction direction, either pulling in or pushing back and hold the contraction for a minimum of three seconds, but usually around five, 10 seconds is good or more, and then relax and try to get a little deeper. So you can keep trying to open up the angle. You can keep trying to get a little deeper and lower to the floor. Keep trying to open that up in all those different positions. In the second round of the stretch, we're gonna stay upright. We're gonna keep this knee as straight as you can while still feeling safe. And we're just going to think about squeezing the butt cheek here, tucking the tailbone down to accentuate the stretch in the inner thigh. You can also, to make this more difficult and more intense, think about leaning to the side here. So you're thinking about dropping that hip down as your whole body, including the pelvis, drop down to help you go towards that leg. Don't force this, stay in a range of motion that feels manageable and keep noticing the muscles deep in the groin, opening up and lengthening as you bend to the side. For contractions, you can use the same ones we talked about, which include pulling towards the midline and also pushing back behind you. All right, so let's get ready to stretch the inner thighs. We're gonna be kneeling down on one knee, leg outstretched, use extra elevation or stand on this leg if you're really, really stiff. Then we're gonna fold forward and begin the stretch. So here we go. Just breathe, and relax. Use whatever support you need to feel safe. You wanna keep the lower back in a neutral position. So it should feel like you still have this curvature. You can check it by doing little pelvic tilts to make sure you can still anterior tilt and that you're not stuck in posterior pelvic tilt. You wanna move your hips back towards that back heel. If you wanna use contractions, you can either pull your foot in towards the midline or pull it 
back that way behind you. Definitely experiment with both because both can be really, really helpful. So you contract, hold for around a count of five or more, and then relax, see if you can go a little bit deeper into the stretch. And again, contract, and back more. Feeling that inner thigh stretch. All right, go ahead and take a rest. We're gonna switch sides. And when you do this, take your time. Don't push hard into any position. So if you need assistance, use it. Just gonna have your leg outstretched. Again, maintain a neutral spinal position. And here we go. So this knee should stay straight or as straight as you can while feeling safe. If it feels like you're gonna pop something, bend the knee a little bit. Aim the stretch so you feel it somewhere along that inner thigh line. If you need assistance, use it. Feel free to explore different angles a little bit. Just make sure your pelvis is doing what you want it to do, not what it wants to do. So be very intentional about that. Use those contractions if you feel like today is a good day for it. Contractions should not be 100% intensity. When you first start, they should be light contractions so you can just get used to feeling those muscles doing some work. And then over time, you can increase the intensity. So contract and relax. Or if you just want a static stretch, you can do that too. Just see what your body likes. Take a rest, and we're going to go into the next position. So we're sticking the right leg back out to the side. This time you're probably gonna want something to help you support yourself. If you don't need it, you don't have to use it. Quick interruption to say a big thank you to these people on screen right now. Thank you so much for your donations to support this channel. If you want to support me too, you can go to uprighthealth.com donate to find all the simple, easy options or use the join and thanks buttons on YouTube. And if you'd like to have this workout as well as more workouts without any ads or anything like that in a full comprehensive program, be sure to go to uprighthealth.com DIY to check out the Healthy Hips program. All right, let's get back to it. Leg is outstretched. You're gonna think about sinking the hip, that side of the pelvis down. And you're just sinking over to that side if you can, or you can just hold this position. Think about squeezing the butt cheek, tucking the tailbone on this outstretched side. Feel that stretch in the inner thigh. And then when you feel ready, you can start sinking towards that foot. Dropping that hip down. If you want a nice side stretch, bring your arm up overhead. But make sure you're feeling that. Focus on feeling that inner thigh. Contractions are the same as we've talked about. So pulling in, pulling back. Just getting used to feeling those muscles working. Stay there, keep that butt squeezed, tuck that tailbone, feel that stretch all through the inner thigh. Play around with your pelvic tilt, 
check in, see if there's a position that feels weak or super stiff. Nice. I'm going to gently come out of that. So again, with any stretch, any difficult position, you want to stay within a reasonable limit and play around with positions, angles, etc. So here we go. Tuck that tailbone down a little bit, squeeze that butt cheek, keep the knee straight if you can. Play around with pelvic tilts a little bit, see if there's a specific position that feels a little off. When you feel ready, you can think about tipping that side of your pelvis down. Get a good side stretch by reaching up overhead if you want it. Contractions will be in towards the midline or back behind you, whatever feels most beneficial for you. If it feels difficult, great. Just keep it within the realm of doability. Keep it reasonable. Feel those inner thigh muscles, visualize them lengthening in there. Nice job. Take a rest. All right, now before you get up, I just want to remind you to take your time here. Use assistance. Don't try to move really quick because if you overstretch some of this stuff because you're being a little bit too overzealous, then you might feel some pain in there. So take your time. If you feel like, whoa, my hips are way more open, awesome, perfect. If you feel like, oh, I feel unstable right now, then make sure you think about strengthening your inner thighs as well. Check out some of my videos that I'm going to link in the description box and hopefully I'll remember to put them right there. If you felt like this is really helpful and your hips feel a lot better, then feel free to do this two to three times a week. Just give yourself some space in between days. And then over time, if you feel like, yeah, I can tolerate this every single day, that's fine. Just make sure you're not trying to be super intense all the time, every time you do it. You wanna give your body some time to recover from the work of lengthening and lengthening and then getting stronger in those lengthened positions. And if you want a full program full of videos like this to help you improve your hip mobility, improve your hip strength, and just get rid of hip pain so your hips are healthy and functional, again, be sure to check out the Healthy Hips program. You'll find it at uprighthealth.com DIY. It will help you rebuild your hips at home. For more free videos to help you with your hips, you can also check these out here. And remember to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos like this one. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.